I surrender. I think that was some lyrics in there, wasn't that? Man, if you're just willing to surrender to him, there is no giant big enough to stand in the presence of Jesus Christ in your life. Oh, they can taunt. And yeah, they can try and hang around and they can come back and you might have to do a little bit of a fight, yeah? You might have to pray for a little while. You might have to stand your ground. You might actually have to just live on uh, faith. But there is nothing on this earth that he cannot do. And I want to show you something. How many of you are Christians under two years of age? Under two years of age. I'm not talking now, listen to me carefully. I'm talking about being in a relationship. Remember what Dion said? It's not talking about having the faith in him. I'm talking about that relationship where you're wanting him to get moving in your life. So not how long you've known him, how long have you had him in a relationship. And I'm talking to everybody under two years of age. So just put your hand up. Yep. Can I tell you something? For those of you that have been around like Mr. Swanbury since Moses was walking on the earth and have been around for a long time, just put your hand up. Those that have been around for a long time, longer than two years. Can I tell you a little secret? For all of you that are two years and under, 20 minutes and under, you all have the same power and authority as Mr. Swanbury has who knows him for 50 years. Can you believe that? Mm. Here's where the fun gets interesting. If we actually know that, how come the giants are so big? See, this is what we do different to David. David's had one king. Now remember, this is a king. You know what happens if you backmouth a king, yeah? It used to be that way if you backmouth the pastor, but you lot have blown that out of the water. <laughs> you can end up in serious trouble. Have a look at what he says to a king. I already done this, dude. I reckon the king would have suddenly gone, Christian, what do you think? Because suddenly his fear, David's faith, is confronting his fear. Can you see that? David's faith is confronting his fear. Let's keep going. Next one, please. David said, The Lord who delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. You see something happening, don't you? You know, one of the things that amazes me, you ever been involved in a pity party session? Anybody ever been involved in a pity party session? Do you want to know what a pity party session is? <laughs> Let me show you what a pity party is. You know when you're sick with somebody else and they're telling you how bad your life is and the next minute you know you're joining in, telling them how bad your life is and before you know it, you're having a party. Anybody been involved in that? I think we all have over our life. And I find myself, when I'm counselling people, I've got to stay out of that. Because the moment I allow their to come on to me, what happens to me? I join the party. Oh, I really like this. David stood his ground with the king and he's gone, uh-uh. Did you know how all of a sudden the king submits to him? Can you see that? The king goes from saying, you can't go because you're young and you're stupid and you don't know what you're doing. In a matter of a conversation, the king does a complete backflip and says, well, go now. Off you go. What do you reckon is going to happen if you stand your ground with the giants? They're going to flip. Trust me, they will. I've seen this many times in my own life. And some of them can just be darn right nasty. You, ever, you know those nasty ones? It doesn't matter how much you tell them to go, they just keep wanting to persist. They're the ones you've got to fight. They're the ones you've got to resist. Saul says, go and the Lord be with you. I love this Lord be with you statement. Do you know why I love it? Never heard anything of the Lord before David brought it up. <laughs> you notice that? Didn't hear Saul talking anything about the Lord until David brought it up. These enemies of ours, these giants, are never going to talk about him. They're never going to give homage to Christ in your life. They're never, ever going to say, quick, go and have a chat to Jesus. Remember who he is to them. He's their overcomer. He's the victory over them. We've got to remind them about who he is. Does that make sense? They're never going to sit back and say, well, hang on a minute. My name's depression, but if you just go and have a chat to Jesus, I'll leave you. 
And then they're going to tell you that. They're going to come and do everything possible to stop you from coming to Jesus. They will do everything in their power to stop you coming to church, to Bible studies, to socializing with Christians. They will do everything in their power to isolate you. Do you know why they will want to isolate you? Anybody got an idea why? Sorry? Like the hot coals thing, they'll start to get you to doubt even more. They'll wear your faith down. Go and have a look at any wild animal that's a carnivore. Yeah, lions, coyotes, hyenas, whatever. Go and have a look what they do. They separate weak and elderly from the pack. Yeah, you ever notice that? Well, they're very young. They separate them. There's a reason because there's a pack. How many of these young, how many of us can fight ten giants at one time? That's why they separate us. Because then they want fear, bitterness, unforgiveness. These are all giants individually, right? So they want a whole pack of them because they want to surround you as a pack. They want to come after you. Because if they can consume you and get you to not trust Jesus, then you have no power and authority over them and they will not only torment, but they will control your life. How many people have been under the control of those things? I put my hand up. Addictions is not on you. Know, they put it in one. See, they don't like it when Rick just takes the time to pray. Ah, nothing big. Doesn't know what's going on with Cheryl unless she shared it, but anyway. So Rick just takes the time to pray, and Cheryl says, while he's praying, I get set free. Ah. I wonder what happens when we gather then. What do you think that's trying to show us? Trying to show us that when we come together, and there is, I think the Bible says, don't quote me, but I'll try and do it. I think it says one puts two thousand in the fire. Is that right? Two puts how many? See the multiplication effect? How many do you think get put to fight when we gather and pray? When we talk to each other and share, not judge, not criticize, but support. How much more do you think things get put to flight in your own life when you've got understanding with you? You all know the story of Moses when his hands were up, the battle was going their way, as soon as his hands went down, the battle started to swing, took two dudes to hold his arms up to keep the battle going. Pretty hard to hold somebody else's arms up if you're hiding behind a rock yourself. Cool bananas? Let's take a bit more of a look. Next one, please. I think we got one more. Then Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. Next one, please. And David girded his sword over his armor. Then he tried to go but could not, for he was not used to it. I want to focus on this. God does not want you to try and imitate, copy um, anybody else. He wants you to develop your own warfare. Amen. Hey, very controversial, isn't it? Because now we're saying, hang on a minute, and I'm saying there's nothing wrong with reading right now, books, there's nothing wrong with listening to pastors, there's nothing wrong with helping each other, but if that is your only weapon against the giants in your life, you're going to get into trouble. Because they're not the ones who say it. I apologize earnestly if I'm offending anybody, but the church never saved anybody. All it ever did was condemn. All it ever did was put laws on people. That's why I wanted to publicly say this morning how blessed I am by all of you that this place is free. Yeah? Please listen to me and listen carefully. There is only one who paid his life for you. Who was it? He is the only one who died and rose again. He is the only one. There is no other. I'm sorry to the beautiful wives that you all have and the beautiful husbands you all have. Bad luck. You can love them. <laughs> you can share your life with them. You can't save them. You know, all of you with your beautiful children, those who have got children lost, I apologize. They're God's. Mine's not doing so good either, by the way, so I can't say that. You know, God said to me, Red, before he was ever your son, he's my son. Hand him over. Oof. That's a bit of tough work, isn't it? Your finances, you think they're yours? 
You think you've suddenly been blessed by God, that you've been favored above everybody else? Let me tell you something. Your finances are there from God to bless others. That's biblical. Very controversial. Warning all of a sudden, isn't it? You need a saviour for yourself. It's good to lean on everybody else, don't get me wrong. So I'm going to ask something, I'm going to ask it right now. How many in this room know him personally as their saviour? Nobody else. Only him. And if you drop dead right now, your husband, your wife, your children, your friends, your money, are your beauty, I'm not going to save you. You're the first one to laugh when I said that. How many know that ain't going to save you? You know, I'm a good person. I've been a good person. I've done good things according to who? You can be the best person on the planet. You're not going to make it unless you believe in one and one at one only. David stood on one and one only and have a look at how he changed his environment. He changed the king's environment. You want to change people's lives? When fear comes, your faith rises. You know, when Kelly was alive, before she passed away a few years ago, I used to go visit her, and there was a lot of fear, yeah? And when I used to walk in the house, they said, well, you know, it was funny because um, they wanted me to move in. I said, I don't think an Eskimo like this. And I said, well, when you're in the house, there's no fear. And I said, because there's no fear found in faith. That don't change the truth. Remember the facts. Right? Don't change facts. But what's the truth? Sorry, I got that right wrong one. What's the truth? Facts are facts. You've got to deal with things that you don't like from time to time. They're going to be tough. But the truth is, Jesus said what? I have overcome what? Well, I'm going to show you what that means. He overcome your will. That's what he overcome. Your will. If you're willing. You know, I've been, like I said earlier, I've been watching just this week at the end of the week. You know, it's been good. It's been a long week. It's been tiring for me. It's been a very busy week. But the last couple places I went at the end of this week, Man, do you know when you get that kink inside yourself, when you've been talking to somebody for a while and they suddenly get it? You know, they sit there going, rant, and you sit there going, oh yeah. Anybody had that? Man, what a good end to the week. And I'm sitting there looking at them, they're going, rant, you've got to get it. And I'm going, mm hmm. I've telling you this for how long. And I sit back and the Lord says to me, rejoice that they're rejoicing, Red. And rejoice with me because they're getting me. <laughs> not you. Some of us need to get ourselves out of the way of the giants and let Christ through. Sound familiar to some of you? Actually, get out of his way. Lord, I take my hands off. I give them to you. Lord, I can't fight this anymore. I've got to get you in the middle of this. <laughs> I like this part. It says, if he was not used to it, what works for Reinhard Bonke in South Africa will probably not work for you in Australia. Different place, different location, different time, different people. Take the principles and learn it for yourself. And I don't care if that's controversial. Do you know why I don't care? Because it's fantastic that we've got these resources, but if you're going to live your life off of his revelation, who is Jesus going to become to you? Is he going to become yours? Where you can talk like David talked about him, or are you going to talk about, well, no, Bobby said this. This one said this. Can I tell you, that's not going to cut it, because your giants are going to sit back and say, well, I've heard of this dude, but who are you? The giants in your life need your testimony of revelation of who Jesus is against them, not somebody else's. I didn't write this book, man, but I'm going to tell you something. With the struggles that I've been through, and I was watching your neck, you know, and that's pretty cool. She's got me, don't you think? That is the most mixed response I've ever seen. You know, when Katie went that, um, you know, that lump, that tumor, cyst, yeah, that we found out later wasn't there. Remember, that's a pretty cool testimony. People will come up and they'll go, man, how cool she is. She's got you to pray for them. And I went, no, you missed the point there. I actually offended a couple of people. I said, if you really know my wife that well, um, I don't minister to my wife. You all know that? She's my wife, mate, not a ministry. We'll pray. When she needs to talk to a pastor, she goes to where she feels comfortable. 
because I'm not crossing that line. You all men know what I mean by that, don't you? You only cross that line, you're going to get hurt. Do you know what some people said to me? Man, she's really blessed she's got you because you'll be acting in faith. And I said to her, yeah, she's nothing. She doesn't have a faith in Jesus. She doesn't have a relationship. She doesn't know what she's doing. How many of you know that is not the truth? You know what she did? She went where? To Jesus. Her Savior. She went straight there. Listen, I'm going to say this in front of you. After going through the death of one wife already, I said to her, God's not going to let me go through that again. And she said to me, oh, shut up. <laughs> let me show you faith here, huh? And I said to her, no, 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 no. He won't let that go again. I've, I've been through that. I'm going first. You can put up with it. You know what she said to me? Shut up. If it's my time to go, I'm going. And don't you raise me from the dead or I'm killing you. <laughs> I want to show you something to you. Here. I shouldn't be playing with it, should I? Can you hear the testimony? She's not rejecting me. She's simply saying, I don't want to hear your doubt. My faith in Him. Did you hear that? That's the only reason I'm picking on her this morning because it's the one time I can where it's in context and I don't get in trouble for doing it. We'll leave here and if you see me with a black eye, you know what happened. Did you notice how then I back off? Because my fear of what's this going to happen, what's that going to happen, she suddenly goes, I don't want to hear it. My faith is in him, not you. Does that mean we didn't talk? Does that mean you didn't when that phone call comes through? I'll tell you what happened. Man, she tough as hell as his wife of mine. And I mean, she's as soft as a little pussy cat. To you, I'm not to me. Anyway. When the phone call comes through and they said it's not there, she wept and the first thing to come out of her mouth was, thank God I got red. <laughs> what do you think come out of her mouth? Thank you, Jesus. See the point. Not allowing my doubt or my faith. I spoke to others who said, Oh, isn't she lucky she's got you? And I'm going, huh? She got Jesus, man. She ain't got me. My job is to walk with her. You know, there's people in this room, if you will just learn that principle with your spouses and your children, you'll find some giants start to fall down a bit. Oh, there's a word for some people. We're trying to take others' armour that doesn't fit us. Did you notice, if you actually keep reading, and I mean, we're not, so that's okay. If you actually notice, it says there, David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I am not used to them. You don't need anything else other than your testimony to face your giants. Christ said, I will work for you. I will go ahead of you. If you read your scriptures, did you hear what he says? I'll never leave, never forsake. I'll be there with you. I have a lamp under your feet and a light under your path. Yeah? That's just a few scriptures coming to my head. Don't ask me where they are. I didn't go to Bible school, but sure, I'll be able to tell you later. The point I'm trying to say is what spontaneously should be dropping. The Holy Spirit should be just chucking things at you. And if all you have as a new believer or a 50-year-old new believer that he loves me, that's more than enough of a testimony. That's more than enough. Just to stand and say, he loves me. Because how many giants show you you love? I don't know him. Only he can love you. Faults, flaws, problems, religious hang-ups, nocturnal hang-ups, <laughs> hang-ups. And you know, if you could just get this, he says, that I love you as you are. Broken, damaged, whatever it is, a thousand giants, he says, I love you right now as you are. All you got to do is say, come here. You know, it says in the next scripture down, it says he picked up his staff. You know, that's what he used with the sheep. And he picked up his slingshot because he knew how to use that. You know, when they're walking around with swords and spears, what does a slingshot look compared to a sword and a spear? It's pretty trivial. Now, you think about it, when he's walking back and you've got all these... Uh, you know, that's like getting a knife, right, and going with a SWAT team to walk. You know, they've all got machine guns and this that, and you're on that little knife. They look at you and go, mm, fruit loop. What do you reckon the army would have seen as this little dude walks out into the open carrying only a slingshot? What's your slingshot? 
What's that little thing you carry? Is it prayer? Is it the truth? <laughs> Is it just his name? All he took was a slingshot. And let me tell you, I won't go and do a Bible study next week. I know if you want to hear the rest of this, come along. We're talking about the five stone steps. He took five stones. Then let me show you. If all you take with you against this giant is the name of Jesus, then you've already overcome it. Can you believe it? Man, not hard. Oh, that's right. You know when I'm standing right here and there's no giants because I'm talking and you know they're all hiding away. It's when I leave here and I come across people or I go home. Well, that son of mine, and then all of a sudden that giant just stands right up in front of me. It's then that I've got to stand on what I do. And for all those that preach, what happens to us? Hey, Tony, as soon as you start preaching, it's coming. <laughs> Because I'm here to tell you, these giants try very hard to defy Jesus. They defy Jesus by trying to defy us into believing. When we stand our ground with Jesus, they've got no hope. But yeah, you might have to fight. You know, I want to show you something. Do you reckon David didn't have to overcome fear? Do you reckon when all this talk is going on, he didn't have to overcome rejection from his brothers? He didn't have to overcome mocking by a king. He didn't have to overcome the whole army laughing at him. Don't think we're orphans here. This has gone on before us. He overcome all of that with simple truth. Don't let no man heart fail. I'll go take care of this. So may I give you this word this morning. Do not let your heart fail. He will take care of this if you include him in it. So we're going to do something right now. You're all going to stand up. Because you'll be sitting for a while. You're all going to try not to talk. <laughs> you're all going to close your eyes and you're all going to let go of everything you've ever known. About religion. About faith. And you're going to try really hard because some of you have been doing it for a while. Others it'll be pretty easy. It's a new thing. For those of you that have been in the kingdom for a long time, never forget the basics, yeah? Basic instructions before leaving earth and survival. Never lose the basics. The more I'm learning about Jesus, the more I'm understanding, the simpler this is becoming. Sometimes you've got to, learn to, you've got to need to learn everything to unlearn everything and keep it simple. You're standing in front of your own Saviour right now. You're standing in front of Jesus. Remember, the Bible says, where two or more will gather, so shall he be. He's here, yeah? He never leaves you. Wherever you go, he goes with you. All you've got to do is close your eyes, and I want you to do one simple thing. Don't come with a ritual right now. Don't come with rites. Just simply come with freedom. So let's do this. Lord Jesus, I'll, I'll, I'll use control, not me. You're talking to Jesus yourself. I'm not going to do I'll do this for myself. You do it for yourself. I want you right now, in your own words, don't worry about anybody else. Simply say, my heart will not fail no more on account of these giants. For you are with me even unto the end of my days. I want you to call out to yourself. If you want to say more than that, if you want to say less than that, you do whatever you want. We're just going to spend a couple minutes on it. And some of you are going to hear this from him. Thank you. Because he's been wanting to get involved in everything going on, but because he's a gentleman, he won't come until you ask him. For some of you right now, you're going to feel a tightness in chest because for the first time, you're going to feel vulnerable of the unknown because you've lived in the peace life for so long that now you've just said to him, you take it. How many is afraid of the unknown in this room? I think there's a lot of us afraid of the unknown. 
When you hear something back from God in you making this statement, I just want you to put your hand up because He told me He would speak to you Himself this morning. And that many of you would hear Him. Yeah, so just look at me when you put your hand up so I can tell you so you can put your hand down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. I don't believe He wants one of you to leave here today. Yeah, without you, yeah. Without you hearing from him as your own saviour, yep, yep. I got a rough idea who has and who hasn't. I'm just waiting. I tell you, yeah, I'm not. I mean, we could be here for three days if you want. Probably won't work for the old senior sins. <laughs> he told me that he did not want to share one of you with anyone, least of all me. That he wanted to touch you himself this morning. That all I had to do was to get you to make the invitation. That was my part. He would do the rest. I want to see the hands that keep coming up. As you hear him say something, I don't care if it's... Yep. 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 <laughs> so you don't have to look at me so I see your hand go up. Yep. Yep. Cool. Oh, we're getting through everybody now. Keep going. Yep. Do you know why? Because this has got nothing to do with me. I've got my own giants to deal with. Right, maybe you should take a seat before you fall over. Is there anyone else? You gotta hear it from him, not from me. You know, Gerard, for you to go forward, I'm just gonna give you this regard, yeah? For you to go forward, you have to cut the pipes. And it has to be cut in form. You're not to take all the things with you. Can't put out new wine and old wine skins. Cool. You know I got that. Anybody else? Got you, bro. You got your own giants to fight with him, not between you, between you and him. For some of you, the very word doubt is a big giant right now. And I tell you, he's going to make it look very, very small if you take that there. Alright, so while everybody's standing, we're going to do something different. Keep your last one in. No peepers now. <laughs> keep your peepers to yourself. I get to keep my eyes open because I'm special. Ask my wife, she'll say scary special. Alright, I'm going to do this. Because we're talking about issues of art. If there's anybody in this room that does not know him, just put your hand up. That's all you've got to do. And if you've known him in the past, but you don't know him right now, just put your hand up. You never met him, put your hand up. <laughs> and I'm going to wait. I am not going to call you out the front. Don't panic. This is between you and God. It's not going to happen. You don't have to come out the front. All you got to do is put your hand up. If you put your hand up this morning, I promise you, for a individual in here, this is one person who hasn't given their life to Jesus, if you put enough voices between your ears, they're going to stop on the spot and you'll witness it if you just put your hand up and say, that's me, Lord, I want you. Now, there be somebody in your the church, you've done all of that. You just want to make that right right now. If you were to lose your life today, man, the best decision you've ever made is what I'll say. I'm happy to wait for a bit longer because God put on my heart that there would be at least one here. And I don't want to miss that opportunity for somebody to get set free today. Not for me, believe me, not for me, but for you. Right now, can I tell you, all of heaven is looking at you if that's you. And they're waiting for you just to put your hand up and say, yes, Lord. And I tell you, it'll be done on the spot. We'll pray for you, but you won't come out the front. It'll be done on the spot. And I'm going to do it a bit longer. Nobody's looking. Nobody needs to know when you're going to put your hand up. It's just when you and God. It's for you, not for them. 
so please no looking. I know it's very important to whoever these people are, that fear of people is pretty strong. That's why I don't want anybody looking. And I'm going to go for a little bit more. I can't stay here all day on it. And if that's you, I just encourage you, just put your hand up. I promise you, you're not coming out the front. Nobody will know it's you. Only being faithful to go. So if that's you, I don't want you to leave this building today. For whatever the reason is, you didn't put your hand up. Please.